Good evening, Buonasera, Bon Nui, Guten Abend, and however they say g'day in the other 68 countries around the globe that will be joining over the next 25 hours of quite unprecedented television. Indeed, you're about to enjoy not an historic one in a thousand event, but one in 2,000. I'm George Negus, and I'm delighted to be back down under to welcome Australia's millions of millennium revellers to ABC TV's 2000 Today, one of the most ambitious television broadcasts ever put together a genuinely global look at how the world will celebrate the arrival of a new year, a new century, a new millennium. Over the next 25 hours, you'll be part of the biggest worldwide television audience ever. We follow the sun from the moment it rises over the international dateline in the mid-Pacific, heads west in our direction, crosses our own magnificent island continent, takes in East Asia and the Indian subcontinent, Central Asia and Russia to the north, Africa, the Middle East, Europe and the UK, then across the Atlantic, spanning the US onto the Eastern Pacific again, finishing its 360 degree, 24 hour circumnavigation of the globe on the other side of the international date line at sunset in Samoa. Among the many highlights ahead, music from Brian Ferry, Barbara Streisand, the Bee Gees, and the incomparable performance of Dame Kiri Takanawa, and the Bolshoi Ballet in, of course, Red Square. We're visiting such marvels as the Great Wall of China and India's Taj Mahal, and witness the opening of a far more modern landmark like the London contentious Millennium Dome. Needless to say, even in this digital age, technically such a mammoth and unprecedented television exercise is fraught with potential difficulty, from hiccups to stuff-ups, you could say. In any live television program, let alone one of this magnitude, literally anything can happen. But have no fear, contingency plans are well in place here at our hub in Sydney to meet the unpredictable from wherever it comes. Who knows, the hitches could turn out to be almost as much fun as the program the consortium of 60 countries has planned. Culturally, you'd have to say the whole thing is extremely exciting. More than a thousand cameras dotted around the world will capture probably the greatest cross-fertilisation of people, religions, politics, the arts, racial and ethnic differences that we're ever likely to see. Actually, it's almost enough to give television a good name. To kickstart the night between now and midnight, when we all turn into pumpkins or the Y2K millennium bug, bug emerges from its cocoon and turns into a computer-eating caterpillar, we'll be crossing to every state and territory in Australia, plus a very special cross to Uluru. And later, these images of Australiana will be delivered by satellite to the rest of the world. I've got a 75-page rundown here, would you believe, just to tantalise you, but that's for me to know and for you to find out as the hours go by. From midnight through the wee smalls and on, to, on into tomorrow, a team of stellar ABC hosts, including Maxine McHugh, my mate from foreign correspondent Jennifer Byrne, Andrea Stretton, Peter Thompson, John Lombard, Caroline Baum, and a cast of thousands across the country will guide us around the globe as more and more countries have their midnights and their millennium celebrations. But more detail of the fun and entertainment that lies ahead as we go. But for now, Welcome again to 2000 Today, an amazing piece of contemporary television pulling the world together to herald in the new millennium. Right now, though, let's cross to my genial co-hosts for the night, Harbourside at Sydney's Botanic Gardens, those two indomitable party boys, the Revelers Revelers, H.G. Nelson and Rampaging Roy Slave. Good evening, guys. Yes, yeah, tremendous to be locking horns with you, George, and the atmosphere is going off here at uh, the Royal Botanic Gardens. You can probably see and hear some of the great revelry in the background. And, George, it's tremendous to be part of this marvellous occasion that links the world as never before. Uh, Roy, I know it's a dream come true for you, and I, quite simply, at the top of the show, George, am over the moon at the experience. I think this is right, George, and uh, just to clear up uh, an argument we were having a little bit earlier on, uh, off-camera, 
And that is, we've got to accept the convention of time that this is the start of the new millennium. A lot of mathematicians, those interested in number theory, etc., have been arguing over the years that this is not, that uh, the next uh, millennium doesn't begin until 2001. You've got to say, convention says, the public says, the people say, this is when the new millennium begins, in just a few hours' time, when we click over to that magic date that has three noughts in it. And that's good enough for me. You know, a lot of people have been buggerising around with calendars in days gone by. You know, I think uh, Julius Caesar might have had a whack at it. I think uh, Augustine uh, had, a, had a crack at it. The Vatican's had a crack at it over the years. One year, I think, was only three months long. Uh, if we look at the birth of Jesus Christ, he's, he, was in bo he was born in 4 BC. Strictly speaking, 2000 came up, I think, in about 1967. But the people are saying, this is it, 2000, off we shoot, third millennium, here we are. Uh, uh, HG, any worries about the millennium bug? Do you think it's going to be the end of civilization if we know it, or is it a bit of a furphy? Well, uh, George, look, uh, I just hope that people have taken on board the wisdom of the powers of the bee here as we see some magnificent pictures of Sydney on screen now, that the whole event could have passed so easily without anybody taking any note of it, notice of it at all. Unless the boffins in the labs, in the science, the mathematicians, the computer experts came up and powers the bee governments came up with the idea of the Y2K back. It's a dream come true. It's a marketer's, it's a marketer's idea. It's a way of promoting it as it could never have been promoted by the ordinary people. The idea that at 12 o'clock tonight, uh, wherever you are, everything is going to stop. Everything is going to melt down. Everything is going to have us running for the hills. What a great image that would be, Roy, if only there was a shred of truth in it. Yes, I don't think anything's going to happen. Uh, again, we've discussed this earlier. Y2K is just nonsense, George. Uh, computers can understand two noughts. I mean, if you and I can understand two noughts, surely a computer can. And speaking of two noughts, HG, and now three noughts that we're moving into, you know, here we have, here we are in Sydney. You know, arguably the the pearl in the oyster of the world. Yes. Uh, three noughts sitting beside five rings. Ah. There's something magical to that, isn't there? There certainly is. And Roy, maybe you could set the scene here uh, for us uh, at the uh, Royal Botanic Gardens. We have, of course, as you can see, hopefully the bridge and the Opera House as well in the background here, and it's crammed with people, isn't it, Roy, who are going really hysterically crazy. Yeah. Look, we've, we've been to parties, and I, I believe the party went, you know, it turned into the year 1000, you know, 999 years ago. That was a tremendous party, but nothing like this. I've never seen people so excited. I mean, people are going crazy. People are tearing their clothes off. People are plunging into the water. People are just going bananas, berserk. Australians know how to party. And if we are going to send a message out to the world this evening, you know, I know a million countries are taking this. I mean, people are taking this throughout the universe, this coverage from the ABC, uh, with uh, a lot of uh, imagery courtesy of, uh, you know, another network that we won't talk about. That's been settled in court. And I'm sure people across the world aren't interested in that. Uh, the message is that Sydney, Australia, knows how to party. Now, Roy, uh, obviously you've looked at uh, the millennium for a long time and you believe that this is a special night for all Australians. How should Australia and Australians sitting there at home get the most out of this great event? HG, I, when I think of New Year's Eve, I, I always think of home, I think of family, and I think of families sitting around together, often turning the TV off or turning the radio off and just generating their own, their own fun. It's a time to think about time, to think of our position in time, to think about eternity, beginnings, ends, and for grandma and grandpa to talk about their day. Yes. For the kids that are born perhaps, you know, post-1986 to talk about their day. And we used to have a little game at home where we'd construct lists. And I think we can do it here again yes. tonight. Hours of fun, Roy. Hours of fun, yes. HG. Homespun fun, the Australian style. And I've come up with a list here, actually, just to get the ball rolling. And that is, I've prepared, as a starting point, the top five years of the 20th century. And you can join in at home. The, 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 the years I've come up with, 1953, what a cracker of a year that was. 1908, that's when the rugby league started. 1974, beautiful year. Yes. 1966, that's when decimal currency came into Australia. And 1948, when Don Bradman retired with the Invincibles. Now, they're my five top years. Now, if you've got five top years, well... Join us on the net on abclists.com.au. And so, with that as a start, George, back to you with a toast to London. To London, George.
Thanks, thanks, Roy. Thanks, AJ. <laughs> you get the feeling we're going to get sent up during the night. Home spun fun, as the boys said it. And we'll be joining HG and Roy again throughout the night for updates on an, all the excitement on Sydney's magnificent and tonight, as you saw, very crowded harbour. As we speak, we're about 20 minutes away from the first of many midnights to come at a dual location, the Kingdom of Tonga and the Republic of Kiribati in the Pacific Ocean east of here. Right now, though, we're going to join the millions of viewers around the world as we take part in this extraordinary television event, 2000 Today. Seven, we have a go for main engine start. Four, three, two, one. We have booster ignition and liftoff of the space shuttle Discovery as we venture into the 21st century. From the uh, space shuttle Discovery and the crew of SCS 103, I'd like to wish all the people of the planet Earth a uh, happy new year and a uh, great new millennium. Orbits, a familiar planet in the outer spiral arm of the galaxy, do not have much cosmological significance. But during that period, the human race has made great progress in its quest to unlock the secrets of the universe. We have begun to find the basic laws and to develop the technology to reach for the stars. The future is ours to shape. Fifty years ago, when the Second World War was still on, I had what seemed to me a rather good idea, that we could use artificial satellites to broadcast any type of information to the whole planet. So, greetings to the next millennium.
And you are indeed with uh, 2000 Today on ABC Television. And while we're gearing up for the next 25 hours of uh, celebration, celebration of the new millennium, um, the rest of the world has got uh, a few things it won't be celebrating. We've just had news to hand, in fact, that Boris Yeltsin has resigned. A man of history when he got the job, a man of history when he gives it up. His timing is impeccable. He's handing over immediately, apparently, to Prime Minister Putin and will have an election next year, which, in fact, is not very, very far away. You've just seen a taste of the sort of thing we're going to see over the next 25 hours or so as we travel around the world via satellite television to see how people are celebrating the arrival of the year 2000. Right now, though...